Hello everyone and welcome to the video that's going to remind you about three things that you need to know before you can learn about histograms. So if you're already confident on these three things, no problem. Move on to the next video. If you want to watch this just so that you can double check that you're confident, keep watching. So as I say, there are three things that you need to uh, know about. Bar charts, grouped data, and the area of a rectangle. So I'm just going to talk about each one of these, one after each other. So the first thing to talk about is bar charts. So it's at this point, I'll just quickly do a reminder on the difference between the two different types of data. So there are two types of data. These are discrete and continuous. And the difference between them is discrete data is things that you count. Doesn't really require any specialist equipment. Unless, of course, you're counting hundreds of thousands of things, in which case you might get a little bit tired doing it yourself. But it's just to do with counting things. Continuous data is stuff you measure. And will usually require some special bit of equipment. So, so the examples that I'll list here are things like time, where you might use a stopwatch, I mean, you might use a clock, you might use a stopwatch, length or height, you might use a ruler, mass, uh, how heavy you are, so you might use uh, some scales, right? So these things are things that you measure and you would need to round your answer. So you would have to do it to a certain amount of accuracy. So if we just focus in on time as our example, I could measure to the nearest minute, or I could measure to the nearest second, or I could be really accurate and measure to milliseconds, or be even more accurate and keep being as accurate as I like. That's me measuring something. That's me getting continuous data. Discrete data, on the other hand, as I was, as I said before, stuff that you count. You know, you go to the park, you count how many trees there are. You open a packet of sweets and you count how many sweets there are inside. There's no measuring going on. There's just counting. When I've got this sort of data, I might use a bar chart. So if you look at the bar chart on the PowerPoint, we have counted how many children said red was their favorite color. We counted how many children said blue, green, yellow, and pink. So this is what a bar chart is used for. Discrete data. It's going to turn out, and I'll cover this obviously in the future videos on histograms, but it's going to turn out that a histogram is a little bit like a bar chart. A histogram looks quite similar to a bar chart, but it's for continuous data rather than discrete. So what's going to go along the bottom of a histogram is going to be something like time or length or mass. So it might start at zero and go up in minutes, or it might start at zero and go up in centimeters or whatever it might be. That's what's going to go along the bottom of a histogram. And then there's still going to be something to do with the frequency involved. I'll obviously get onto that in a later video. But these two things are quite similar. The only difference being bar chart is discrete, histogram is going to be continuous. And speaking of continuous data, let's just do a quick recap on grouped continuous data. So there was a Hegarty task on this. It'd be really good if all of you could have a go at it. So continuous data, as I just said, that's stuff we measure. And so in our example, we measured the time it takes for some runners to run a race. Like literally that's the time that they took to run the race. Now we're going to, I'll get onto the grouped part of, of the title in just a second. Let's just focus on this example. So there are 200 runners in a race. They all finish, so they all get a time. 
and I've begun to list their results. So the results, so the first person got 16 minute 17 second, then the person who came in second um, got was five seconds slower, uh, and then it goes on. Now, if you notice, I haven't written all 200 times down. What we're going to do is we're going to pretend that we have 200 times all written down. And then what we would notice, hopefully, is that's a lot of information to have out on a bit of paper in front of you, all 200 times. And really, I could I could have said a thousand. I could have said I could make any number I like, right? The idea behind grouping this data together is that it condenses it a bit and makes it a little bit more manageable. So let's have a look at that. <clears throat> so what a group table does is it puts the data into groups. It's continuous because we're, we're measuring it. Like we're, we're, it's something that we measure. It was time. We can have grouped discrete data, uh, but, but uh, this is grouped continuous data that we're talking about at the moment. And uh, then it goes into a table that's going to look a, li a little bit like this, right? So in our exact situation, it's time. And so I'm using the letter T to represent the time in minutes. And these are the groups. So let me just explain what this group here is actually representing. And then I'll talk about the symbols. So this is the group of people who got between 16 and 16 and a half minutes. Now remember that's actually 16 minutes and 30 seconds. This group is the people who got between 16 and a half and 17 minutes. This is the group of people who got between 17 and 18 minutes, 18 to 20, 20 to 25 and 25 to 30. And then what these symbols mean is the time has to be greater than 16, but less than or equal to 16 and a half. So to put that more simply, this is this is anyone who got between 16 and 16 and a half, but it doesn't include 16. But because of this line here, it does include anyone who got 16 and a half. So you might wonder, for example, let's look at these two groups here. Imagine you got exactly 20 minutes. So which group do you go into? Do we flip a coin between them or do you go into both of them? No, you, you, you go into this one the one where the mouse cursor is. Because of this line here, this would include anyone who got exactly 20. And if you look at the pattern of the less than and the less than or equal, less than, less than or equal, less than, less than or equal, etc., you'll notice that there's, it's never um, random which one you go into, right? You, you, every single runner will go into exactly one group. So let's have a look at these three people here. Why are they in this group? So let's have a look. So there was someone who got 16 minutes 17, there was someone who got 16 minutes 22, and there was someone who got 16 minutes 30. So those three people all got between 16 and 16 and a half. And it does include that person who literally got 16 and a half minutes because of this line here. The person who got exactly 17 minutes will go in this group. And then the rest are the, are the numbers that I didn't actually give you. If you check, these numbers should add up to 200. So there was three people who got between 16 minutes and 16 and a half minutes. There was one person who got between 16 and a half minutes and 17 minutes. There were 22 people who got between 17 and 18 minutes. 54 who got between 18 and 20 minutes. 102 who got between 20 and 25 minutes. And 18 who got between 25 and 30 minutes. So, what does this little bullet point here mean? The classes don't need to be equal in width. Well, I've been calling these groups, and that's a perfectly reasonable thing to call them. But another word for that in this situation is classes. So these are all a, uh, a class. Each of them is a class. And then how wide they are is literally, well, how, how big is it from 16 to 16 and a half? or from 17 to 18. So the class widths is 0 0.5 for this one, 0 0.5 for this one, 1 for this one, 2 for this one, 5 for this one, and 5 for this one. So I'll just make a little note for you here, a little definition of what a class width is. 
and I'll just do it with a little example. So here's my example, just two random numbers here. Well, obviously one, this one here has to be smaller than this one, but uh, I'm just gonna pick 15 and 17. Uh, how far is it from 15 to 17? Two, okay, and it's as simple as that. If the numbers themselves are more complicated, you just do the big one, take away the little one. So 17 take away 15 gives you two. And then all this bullet point is actually saying is that they don't all need to be the same width. I mean, don't get me wrong, clearly it's nice if they're all the same width, but they don't have to be. So as I say, we've got a half, a half, one, two, five, five. They don't all need to be the same width. Um, they don't have to start small and get bigger. Uh, they can just be basically any, any widths, any widths at all. Right, finally, area of a rectangle. So remember, if the units for the width and for the length are different, you want to make them the same. So you want them both to be in centimetres or you want them both to be in metres. And so what we're going to do is we're just going to assume that both the units are the same, which means I don't really need to say what they are in this situation. So I'm just going to pretend they're both in centimetres or I could pretend they're both in metres. And then for my formula, all I do is I times the two numbers together, right? I times the two numbers together. I do the length times the width. And then if they'd both been in centimetres, then the rectangle's area would be in centimetres squared. If they'd both been in metres, then it would be metres squared or square metres. And so one question that is going to be irrelevant to do with histograms and why is it going to be relevant? Well, you'll find out in the, in, the, in the next video. Is a sort of question that makes you have to work backwards. So this is where I might tell you that the area is 35. And remember, it doesn't matter what the units are. We can pretend they're in centimetres squared. And then the width and the lengths are going to be in centimetres. But it doesn't actually matter. So I'm just going to say the numbers. The area is 35. The width is 5. So what's the length? So in this situation, you know it would have been 35 is however long it is times 5, right? That's this little formula here with the 35 substituted and the 5 substituted. Now, if you have an, an equation like this, you would divide both sides by 5, which of course gives you the answer of 7. Also, clearly what times is by 5 to make 35? Well, 7, right? But if it was harder numbers, you would know, you would need to know what the process was. For example, if the area was 12.31 and the width was 17.62, what's the length? Well, it's going to be a decimal and you'd probably need to use a calculator, but you need to know what the method is and that's the important bit. Right, so some Hegarty tasks to try out if you want, if you just want to make sure that you're really confident on these three uh, little topics before we talk about histograms. Are on the screen now you could try task 425, task 403 and task 554. If you have any questions or want to anything clarified whatsoever uh, please send me an email, uh, please leave a like, please watch the next video and yeah I will see you again soon.